Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Basil, uh, the Associate Professor of Wild Cornell Medical Center, New York, New York. Today's subject, I'm going to talk very briefly and short about celiac disease. So it's before it was called celiac sprue, but now the term changed to celiac disease. The reason I'm going to talk about it because I belong to the Celiac Foundations of America, and this is an extension of uh, a celiac center in New York. The most important sector of celiac disease and the center was Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center run by Peter Green and now with this is an extension. Celiac disease are very, is a very very common disease. The prevalence in the world is about 1%. The varies prevalences according to countries to countries because celiac disease was ignored or not diagnosed, not even found or not many research in prevalence occurrence was done in the past but now it took a significant amount of consensus and precedence. Celiac disease is actually an immune induced enteropathy in a simplistic term means there is a protein called gluten and the gluten is an abundance of wheat, rye, barley and these gluten challenges our small bowel which is small gut and as an antigen. Antigen means a foreign protein to the body and our immune system responds to this challenge of gluten as an antigen and develops over time an antibody and this antibody comes and destroys the villi. The villi means our small bowel or small intestine is about 13 to 15 feet long and is squished inside the belly and the entire absorptions of water food, nutrition, vitamins, protein, carbohydrate, saccharides, sugar, and of course fat all are absorbed there. And of course iron, vitamin B12, copper, zinc, all these elements as well. And different amino acids which are the branch of protein degradation. What happens in celiac disease as a childhood when the wheat is exposed with amount of gluten, it challenges the body's immune system and that immune causes an adaptive immunity and that kicks in our body's immune cells called lymphocytes or destined lymphocytes that are fighter cells called CD3, CD4 and CD8 cells, the immune cells from the bone marrow and from the local uh, lymphatic system called Pears patch. These lymphocytes come in and in abundance take over the villi. Villi are my finger structures. So each villi has a crypt. These are the tall finger-like entity which has a huge surface area which absorbs water. Every day about eight, nine liters of water are transported back and forth in the small bowel. And small bowel secretes an immense amount of water and other things as well and that's absorbed at the end of the small bowel called terminal ileum. But the celiac disease actually is a disease it hits mostly. There are three types according to the topography type A, type B and type C. Most of it it's actually small intestine, small bowel, the first jejunal area and that area it could be about four or five feet or six feet. So in these areas where all these finger like villus or villi are destroyed what happens there, the white cells or the lymphocytes come in and take over and underneath slowly, slowly. So what happens once this is taken over, these villi gets blunted, blunted, blunted and that's columnar tall finger-like villi are blunted and slunted because to accommodate all the lymphocytes and later on it goes into a flat, flat, flat because a huge amount of lymphocytes come in. So that's the pathology. Who gets it all over the world? Exactly. Caucasians, they thought it's only in Europe, it's not true. But in Europe, we have the statistics. In Finland, one in 81. In Hungary, one in 61. In Ireland, one in 120. In Italy, it's about 100. But it's diffuse. But in Mexico, actually, found out it's 2.5%. And in Algeria, the kids suffer from celiac. But all everybody who has this gluten intolerance or gluten sensitivity or gluten induced immune uh, 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 activation 
they don't have phenotypically they have why because they have to have the gene to have this and these are called dq2 dq8 and there are isotypes of dq2 dq8 but most commonly dq2 and dq8 so you have to have it is the immune induced enteropathy from gluten and gluten like substance with it has to affect with a susceptible individual. That means the individual have to have the gene of DQ2, HLA part actually, called DQ2 and DQ8. So after that, if it is entirely blunted villi, all these villi, what happens? There's no absorption. Then there is malabsorptions. Usually it affects the young adults. It's not true that it affects the children unless some subset of people, subset of people, the children, they are attacked earlier and they have severe diarrhea and malnourished. They use, have rickets, bone destructions, they have osteomyelitis, osteomalacia. But adult, they have a very pleomorphic, means very, very uh, uh, different, uh, varied about the clinical presentation. It's a spectrum. What can happen? They can happen with alopecia, hair loss. It can happen with dizziness can happen that with young children with seizure most commonly most commonly the symptoms are fatigued unexplained fatigue and unexplained iron deficiency anemia remember iron deficiency anemia has to have iron loss but in celiac disease just because in duodenum and the first part of the small bowel there is destroyed villi so iron is not absorbed so this is the first cause of unexplained iron deficiency anemia Second is fatigue, fatigue, fatigue. And third, we call immunopathy. That means all areas of different organs can develop problems, which is arthritis, joint pains, swelling of the joints. But this is not rheumatoid arthritis. It's an immune-induced arthritis, which is the extra bowel manifestations of celiac disease. Can have B12 deficiency, can have neurological dysfunctions, memory changes, ataxia, can have cerebellar dysfunction as well, tremor can have skin changes and this skin change looks like a herpes and this is called a very typical pathognomic thing called dermatitis herpetiformis it can come in the elbow area like a herpetic form all your buttock all your areas different areas but this is not herpes you have to have biopsy to prove the celiac disease where they have an immunofluorescent stain system they will find now besides this they can have uh, effects of thyroiditis, they can have pancreatitis, they can have myocarditis, means infections, inflammations. It is a varied thing, but thyroiditis is very common. Inflammations of the thyroid gland, that could be a hyperthyroid or hyperthyroidism. Celiac disease has significant sometimes diarrhea or could be constipations. So the old bookish clinical features of diarrhea is not true. Things have changed with different evidences day by day. So how you treat celiac disease? Now we know the diagnosis. How is there are some simple blood tests. So what are the blood tests? Most important blood tests called tissue transglutaminase antibody, immunoglobulin A and immunoglobulin G, or deaminated glycine peptide of immunoglobulin G, or anti-endomysial antibody, immunoglobulin IgA and IgG. Glidin antibodies is not done, or before they used to do anti-JO1 antibodies. These are all very non-specific, but glidin peptide antibody also is not specific. There's a significant overlap with this, but recent studies showed that there are false positive endometrial antibody IgA. So a lot of diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, scleroderma, Crohn's disease, they can have the same features of low titer of immunoglobulin A, of anti-endomysial antibody. So all these blood tests, but after that, before you do endoscopy and look at this, the features of endoscopy. So endoscopical features are also just a spectrum. There's a classification called MARS, he's a pathologist, and MARS looked into MARS class one, two, three, and four. Zero, one, and two, you cannot have any any features morphologically endoscopically any features but if you do biopsy you can't find anything else but mars 2 3 and 4 has a blatant blatant celiac disease celiac disease has three different parts called silent celiac disease latent celiac disease and blatant celiac disease remember sometimes it might not present clinically but histologically 
is positive and you have serologically means on the blood test is positive but then what you do you don't need active therapy you follow but when you see the Mars when you see that's exactly how I define these villi are all blunted with significant amount of immune cells which is uh, lymphocytes and then later on could have something called plasmacytes and some sometimes can cause lymphoma this lymphoma is called EATL very bad lymphoma which is called enteropathy associated t-cell lymphoma it can cause other cancers as well squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus and celiac disease induced called one part is called collagenous colitis which is an overlap with celiac disease there's a huge amount of collagen disposition as well just beneath the mucous membrane or in between the lamina propria by histologically but again the idea is here a significant amount of uh, damage to the villi and no absorptions at all so absorptions of what kind absorptions of fat is called steatoria one absorption of fat is not there fat comes in stool is a diarrhea diarrhea very oily kind of stool that floats and b12 deficiency as i to tell you told you zinc deficiency can cause bullous and skin skin changes called acrodermolytic enteropathic which is not too common but in children they have other deficiencies as well uh, protein deficiencies and bone calcium so calcium causes osteoporosis broken bone brittle bone and osteopenia and not really a ricket ricket type but people who have mother's milk till six months as a study though and showed that they have less chance of celiac disease there are so many ways we can just found the celiac disease there's something else now we call gluten sensitivity that gives you bloating and huge amount of bacterial overgrowth we call it SIBO in the gut and that causes pain and irritations and huge amount of bloating and gas it's a part of a irritable bowel syndrome that's overlap how to diagnose you have to do all the blood tests and look into this sodium potassium and chloride significant diarrhea can change its sodium level can cause low calcium and magnesium that can cause cardiac disease as well so besides the calciums and magnesiums how do you treat celiac disease first of all so you don't have to do endoscopy all the time but it's good to do endoscopy after the blood results but you have to rule out inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease you have to rule out thyroid dysfunctions and you have to rule out other diseases like parasites like giardia in the small bowel and after that what you have to do only thing you have to give gluten-free diet there are thousands of gluten-free diet ask there is something else called gluten uh, contaminations people with blatant celiac disease cannot use anybody's toaster because one bread piece of bread has 10 grams of gluten remember so this is a very sensitive thing you have to separate all the utensils and if you go to a restaurant you have to mind you have to find out the restaurant has celiac food or any any departmental store so what are you doing with alcohol there are some potato vodkas and potato induced alcohols or you can do some beers uh, comes from Australia called Foster another beer from Netherlands which is for celiac and you can have non-alcoholic beer as well not celiac so all the alcohol is made of grains so you cannot only thing you can do use one thing called oat and this oat has to be non-contaminated oat from Ireland or another thing you can do you can eat maize so you can have celiac diet with rice corn maize tapioca and uh, 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 many other celiac uh, gen genetically done celiac diet you can take it but you have to be 100% in retentions and compliance and there is a new drug coming actually work on the tight junctions antibodies called lizaraglutide it's not out yet but that would be blocking the tight junctions that induces the all the immune cells to come in and invade that's in the progress there are other things vaccines are not done yet for celiac disease but again and again this disease is very prevalent anybody is having fatigue and iron deficiency anemia or thyroiditis or unexplained seizure hair loss to vitiligo vitiligo means all whitish patches in the in the skin always look for celiac disease and then there is 
a, a website for celiac for all the diets celiacdisease.com or you can contact me www.gastrospecialist.com www.gastrospecialist.com or celiacbasu.com thank you